Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Alhamdulillah Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Dear brothers and sisters uh, So today um, uh, I'll discuss on investing in wealth management So you know investing is one of the most important uh, part in wealth management and uh, wealth planning Especially, investment is uh, required for uh, for retirement planning and also for the growth of the wealth and to, to protect our wealth from uh, inflation and others. So today, uh, basically, I will talk about uh, on some of the theories and uh, the, the opinions or, uh, or investment um, worldview of uh, the economies or the biggest investors and um, uh, some of the, the pricing uh, models uh, that uh, and uh, the, uh, the fundamental analysis uh, of, uh, of shares. So first about the theory and the, the fundamentals. Well, uh, the Paul Samuelson is uh, is one of the famous uh, economists, uh, is a Nobel laureate uh, economist. So his investment uh, philosophy is, uh, is quite uh, popular. So he is one of the proponent of uh, passive investment, and uh, and he said uh, it is not always true that uh, you cannot lose money if you hold equities for long term. Because if you uh, hold the equities for long term, actually, ultimately, eventually, uh, your your risk, uh, also the uh, the probability uh, of loss, uh, also increases. And he advised not to spend too much time on checking and adjusting your investment. Rather, he asked for for passive investment. He said he believes that the true value of a security is determined in the market. From the wisdom of the masses and not by the intelligence of one. So he is uh, one of the um, he is um, one of the proponent of the, the efficient market uh, uh, theory, where uh, he believes that uh, a group of people cannot just uh, beat the market. Rather, the market is, uh, is is efficient, is fair because of competition and the information are are available. So. Um, so all people know uh, which share is going to, uh, which company is going to do better, which company is uh, going to lose. So uh, is uh, is available everywhere. So uh, only a group of people with their intelligence uh, they, they cannot just uh, beat the market consistently. So he is, uh, I would say, one of the proponent of a passive investor. Similarly, uh, John Bogles also is uh, another economist and also a Nobel laureate economist. He also advocates uh, passive investment approach as well. So he um, advocates buy and hold and investing in an index fund. So uh, index fund is, uh, is a basket of fund. Means uh, is a, usually uh, an index fund will, will follow a, any uh, any share market, so all different types of uh, of shares. So um, he said an investor should invest in an asset which has low cost, uh, lowest cost, and be happy with the average market return. Professional managers cannot beat the market, therefore there is no sense to pay for this. So for him, uh, we should uh, we should not uh, go for. Uh, you know, beating the market, and rather we should uh, look for you know, passive investment and be happy with the, the the return that we get. And at the same time, we try we try to mitigate the cost for the investment. So we, with that, we can actually maximize our profit. If we actively invest, we lose a lot on uh, on on the transaction costs on buying and selling and paying tax. So John Bogle's philosophy is quite uh, similar with the uh, uh, Paul Samuelson's theory. However, unlike these two, uh, Warren Buffett, he's uh, the, the owner of uh, Berkshire Hathaway, 
and he is uh, considered one of the great investors in this time. So his philosophy is quite uh, different than uh, uh, than the previous two, and he actually uh, was able to to beat the market, uh, and he was uh, one of them that was uh, who was uh, actually uh, proven. Uh, that the the efficient uh, market hypothesis uh, is is not uh, always true. So he he advises buying a comp. However, he has a lot of principles and uh, and he has a lot of followers uh, in uh, and his way on how to invest. So Warren Buffett he advises buying a company share that are much cheaper than the company's overall net worth. So he uh, advises to go for a company uh, and to to, uh, to do the fundamental analysis. And uh, according to him, so sometimes there are there is inefficiency in, in market in some time, especially when there is a crash. So the share prices go down for of. But at that time, the, the investor should choose the companies that are fundamentally strong, that has a good potential to grow, and we need to buy uh, those shares uh, so, uh, so that in the long run, uh, those, um, the share price of those companies will go up. Because the money, after some time, the market will, uh, will, uh, will fill up uh, or the market will correct itself. And he advises to invest in well-known companies. So one of the principles of Buffett that he will not invest in something that he doesn't know. Rather, he'll go for well-known companies which are popular, which has uh, good uh, potential. And he also uh, uh, said, do your homework before investing. Means uh, we must do the fu fundamental analysis of the company. We must know the company very well. Uh, and we must, uh, then we can. Invest. And one of his uh, famous saying, he said, try to be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. So uh, this uh, it, um, statement mostly applies to uh, the situation where um, when there is a market crash or failure, so at that time people are afraid and they are selling off the shares. So, as, uh, and so that is the time for the investor to buy the shares at a cheap rate. Uh, for, for example, if you if you want to buy a house which is uh, very expensive, uh, and then if you wait for um, economic uh, recession, then uh, at that time maybe the house price will go down and you'll buy at a cheap price, and then later on when the economy will be fine, then you will sell it. So his advice is when people are fearful, especially during uh, market. Uh, crashes people are selling off so at that time we need to find out the fundamentally strong uh, companies and greedy means to to buy more shares and we need to uh, uh, we need to be fearful when others are greedy means that when uh, people um, the market uh, situation uh, is good and people are uh, buying more shares and uh, the sh share price of the company is going up so at that time, we need to be uh, fearful because maybe there will uh, be a crash uh, after this. So that is uh, his famous saying. So and <coughs> you mu uh, according to him, uh, Warren Buffett, he said you must be an intelligent, passion and disciplined investor. So for him uh, to be disciplined is more important uh, than to be intelligent. And many uh, investors, uh, they lose because they cannot uh, control their emotions, they, they, uh, so they lose. So it is very important to be passionate when there is a, when there is a market crash or when the share price go down. We need to be passionate, we need to be disciplined. And one of the interviews uh, or one of the analysis on Warren Buffett um, shows that oh, uh, the, uh, the, su su the, the reason behind the success of Bu Buffett was that he, was, uh, he, he used to be always rational and disciplined. So now, if we understood, uh, so we from uh, Warren Buffett's philosophy, we understood how important it is uh, to understand, to uh, 
uh, to know the fundamental and to do the fundamental analysis uh, before uh, investing in any uh, share. So the fundamental, so what is this fundamental analysis? So this is a method of measuring a security's intrinsic value by examining related economic and financial factors. So fundamental analysis will look into the company, its assets, and we will look for what is the, the real value of the company. You see, you see in share market, there are different types of companies. There are some companies, uh, they have a very strong asset, they have a viable business. So these are uh, these companies, they, they, they are uh, very strong and they, they, their intrinsic value is quite uh, good. But at the same, ta same time, sometime, uh, we can see some of the companies, they, they, they have high de uh, the, the level of debt and um, maybe uh, and their business are not that viable, but maybe the, the, the price uh, of the, their shares is up maybe because uh, of some um, temporary situation maybe because of uh, sudden up of the sales so we need to understand the, 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 the real value of the company so that is we know through the fundamental analysis so it is a method of determining a stock's real or fair market value so this method of stock analysis is considered to be in contrast to technical analysis, which forecasts the, the direction of prices through an analysis of historical market data. So uh, if you uh, uh, see some of the advertisements uh, done by the, uh, uh, the brokers, more, many would uh, advertise on technical analysis. So technical analysis is something is is uh, based on historical data. Uh, it's it is based on the concept that uh, the history repeats by itself. So based on the the previous history, they predict the price of a of a share. So that is the the technical analysis, and it is mostly suitable for for short term investment, while uh, the fundamental analysis is um, is I, I in my opinion it is more. Uh, suitable for long-term investors where uh, the fundamental analysis will see look into what is inside the company and what is there uh, the future growth and others okay so for fundamental analysis analysis there will be two uh, can uh, two types of um, uh, analysis first is the qualitative second is that the quantitative for the qualitative we look into the industry whether the industry is viable, what is the growth of the industry. So let's say if we look into the, uh, uh, the, uh, the healthcare, for example, so what is the future? What is, so we need to, to analyze the, the, the viability of the, the industry or some kind of industry they are going to, to, to destroy or they are uh, going to lose. Uh, mostly, um, uh, for example, the, 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 printed, uh, the printing uh, industry or some of the industries are very risky like uh, communications or some of the industry are very good are growing uh, especially the, the health sector or, or even the consumer sectors or technology sectors and then the, the business model uh, we need to see their business model whether their business model is uh, strong with this uh, it has a gr growth uh, potential uh, whether they can uh, survive in different uh, economic condition. Uh, so we know that the, those who go for uh, those who uh, are uh, relying on the uh, the digital uh, business, uh, they are actually right, right now more uh, str stronger or they are more sustainable than those who uh, are uh, only relying on on physical. Uh, way of uh, doing business and we need to see the competition in that industry uh, competition is very important if a com if the competition is very high like uh, in in, in, um, uh, in smart uh, smartphones for example the competition uh, in technology sectors mostly the competition is very high uh, the, uh, then um, uh, it, it is quite risky comparing with uh, uh, some of the, um, the companies where they are the only one or there are only a few uh, of them. For example, the Microsoft uh, or, is, uh, um, or, or Google uh, or um, it, um, uh, 
these are the companies that uh, they have very few competitors and we need to also check the uh, need to check the management of the company the ceo how um, uh, their experience and the, the cfo and others whether uh, the, uh, the management they have enough experience uh, uh, to, uh, and uh, they um, uh, they have enough skill where and they are you know sincere that we can trust we can hope uh, for example uh, even uh, we can give here the example of like air asia even though uh, air asia is suffering but many still uh, trust on the management that the, the ceo of of air asia for an example and uh, we need to check also on the corporate governance corporate governance is about um, how the uh, the transparency of the company the board of the directors Recently, there are a few companies we got so uh, some issues like uh, in Malaysia, like uh, Sarba Dynamic and some other companies. Uh, they uh, uh, they uh, lost their business because of the the issues uh, related to audit, uh, for, for example. And we need to also see that the business cycle okay, at what. Uh, cycle uh, the company is uh, as we know usually businesses they start they grow they peak uh, li uh, and then they will drop so we need to know uh, the business cycle if whether it is a seasonal business so uh, or whether it is uh, viable like utility sectors they are always stable like um, uh, you can say like uh, satu uh, yeah, Sharikat, uh, what, what is, uh, and then TNB, so they are quite stable, uh, but some are uh, like to the tourism sector, they are seasonal. Yeah, so we, and then finally, we need to see the economic condition, uh, whether, the, the, whether the economy, uh, the, the changes, so right now, the coronavirus and the inflation and others, so whether this economic condition will uh, will have an impact or influence on that company. So the companies that um, uh, that will lose due, uh, during to the economic situation, they'll be uh, affected uh, during uh, this time, like um, tourism sectors uh, or the communication sector. So uh, they, that we need to to analyze. And then we also need to look at the, um, the quantitative uh, fundamentals. We need to see the, the balance sheets. We need to see the, the, the profits. Uh, so a good company that has uh, a healthy, stable profit. Uh, some companies, they have a, uh, uh, sometimes they have huge profits, sometimes they have a loss, but they are not stable. Is this a good company that has a small amount of profit, but it is stable? In the balance sheet, we need to check the the asset and liability. If the company has uh, huge debt and the, the, the debt ratio is higher, so that is a big no for investors. And also the, the efficiency and others, we can look at it. And uh, we can look at their cash flows, whether so we can know whether they have enough cash to pay their short-term debt adds, and others. So this is essentially the, the fundamental analysis. So with this, we can uh, actually know what is the, the fundamental strength of the company, the value of the company, and also the, the potential of the company and as the, the industry. Usually, the company uh, that has a very good asset, low debt, and they are making uh, profit consistently. And in that industry, there is a very low competition uh, so these are the companies are uh, very uh, good for the investors. So now uh, we'll discuss uh, on the capital market theory and asset pricing models. So uh, the capital market theory tells us that the, the price uh, of an asset is, is a is a based on the balance uh, okay, between the uh, the demand and supply. It's a, it's, uh, it discusses the economic uh, equilibriums, uh, the, the balance where the supply of and demand for an asset meet, so that the price of the asset does not change. So according to this theory, the price of an asset is based on the uh, the demand and uh, supply.
So these uh, two uh, market equilibriums are the ca uh, capital asset pricing model and the arbitrage pricing model. So these are the two models to know the, the price uh, of the uh, of an asset uh, with a, a, a consider and these two have a different uh, methodology. So both provide an economic framework for pricing assets by relating a security's expected return to uh, to a to measure to a measure of risk for that security that uh, emanates from the market. So they will measure uh, uh, the price of a security considering the the, the volatility, the risk, and uh, and then also considering the return from the. Uh, the risk re uh, return, uh, and then uh, we can know uh, what is the actually the, the required return from, uh, from that asset. So uh, this capital asset uh, pricing model, uh, in order to um, understand this, the the, cap the the proponent of this uh, pricing model, they uh, say that we need to assume that uh, all the investors they have homogeneous expectation means all of them uh, they expect um, uh, maybe long-term returns or maybe they they want to invest in want uh, the similar uh, type uh, of shares and function in frictionless market means there is a market uh, which is uh, like free from tax or means uh, it does not uh, you know charge uh, higher taxes for example for a group of people rather it is uh, same to to all investors and all the investors they have an identical investment planning so they all uh, for example plan for for long term maybe all uh, plan to invest in sharia compliance so and then it is a um, mean variance optimizer means all the the investors they they uh, they opt to have to maximize their investment means uh, that they want to take the minimum amount of risk and they want to get the highest amount of return by taking the, the least amount of risk and have the access to the same available asset means that all the investors they are they have the access to to all the all the assets there's no barrier uh, among the investors so if we uh, so if we assume if all these uh, conditions are fulfilled uh, then we can apply this uh, capital asset pricing model. So, this uh, CAPAM or capital asset pricing model it implies that the expected rate of return of a security is equal to the risk free rate plus a market risk premium. So, if you want to know expected return or which is uh, or which actually gives uh, uh, the required return. Uh, is actually the the risk free return plus the beta of the the security means beta here is how volatile this security comparing with the with the market and then multiplied by expected rate of return minus the the risk free return so this is the formula to to calculate uh, the expected return or the re uh, or we can say that the required return so uh, expected return equal to the risk free uh, rate plus the, the beta uh, multiplied by uh, expected return uh, of the market minus the uh, the risk free uh, rate. So this uh, CAPAM it measures the relative risk compared to the market portfolio of all uh, all the stocks. So here uh, this in this uh, calculation we we will measure the the price of the stock. In compares, uh, comparing its risk with the overall all market, so the the volatility different than market. How volatile is this share comparing with the overall? And if the beta is one, it implies that the security is as risky as the as the market. So if less than one means is less risky than the market. If more than one means is more volatile or more risky than the market. So this is the 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 uh, the different. Uh, then uh, the other uh, calculation or, or the expected return that we learned before where we calculate the, the, the standard deviation from the mean but here we use the beta means that uh, we calculate based on how this security is different from the overall markets uh, risk 
So assume is an example here like that the market is expected to return 8% and the risk-free rate uh, is 3%. So the money market rate or T-bills rate is 3% which is risk-free return and uh, assume that Malaysia for example, Malaysia stock market overall return is 8%. So if the investor is considering adding a security to a market portfolio whose beta is 1.2 means slightly uh, having higher risk uh, than the market, what would be the, the impact of the securities rate of return? So the expected return would be here, the 3%, uh, okay, the, which is uh, uh, the risk-free uh, rate plus the beta 1.2 multiplied by the market return 8 minus uh, the 3 so it got a nine percent so as you see the, it is um, well the market rate uh, uh, market return is eight percent so here the beta is 1.2 so we need to get slightly higher return which is nine percent okay. so that is the uh, formula to actually calculate the expected return or we can say uh, the required uh, return uh, that actually this is the minimum that uh, a company uh, should pay or, or, or the, a share should, uh, should pay. Uh, so it is a benchmark for assessing the fair prices or expected rate of return of many risky assets. Uh, so this is used as a benchmark to, to assess and to, to compare between the uh, assets. It gives an approximation of the firm's required uh, rate of uh, return on equity as I said this is expected return at the same time uh, actually uh, it also gives the the required return that the minimum return that the company needs to pay based on the theory of um, you know risk and return so if uh, the comparing with the market if this uh, share has a higher risk comparing with the old market so they should uh, pay also higher However, there is also some shortcomings in the CAPA. As we know, the, the first thing is uh, that the real world market portfolio cannot be accurately identified. So we cannot actually accurately uh, get a market or portfolio that actually represents the market. And also, the, the as we say, the 8% market return, it also uh, cannot... Uh, we cannot observe uh, because uh, it's, it's constantly and it is so volatile. So we cannot uh, observe uh, actually the whether uh, that um, share is actually given the same return. Okay, because uh, also the time frame is is a, is a different. The market is constant, but the uh, the share is uh, what we calculate is uh, maybe now, but uh, it always uh, is changing the market's return as well. Uh, and there are so many things uh, they are changing and the market is volatile so we cannot really observe and we cannot really accurately identify and also the the assumptions that we just uh, we have mentioned so all those assumptions of course are not possible uh, because it is not possible that all the all the investors they will have the same objectives and and many markets uh, there are also um, uh, uh, there are some restrictions or barriers or on like uh, for foreign investors for example or some type certain groups of investors so now uh, we can uh, see another uh, type uh, of um, uh, asset pricing okay uh, for asset model which is R A apt or the arbitrage uh, pricing theory so this is a theory uh, that will uh, price an asset or the share based on uh, different risk factors so they will calculate each uh, risk factor and then they will get the, the price so it is a multi-factor asset pricing model based on the idea that an asset's returns can be predicted based on its sensitivity to a change in the number of systematic risk factor so it will look into uh, each risk factor one by one and it will calculate the risk okay so here is um, okay uh, so um, here is the formula for, for the uh, to calculate the expected return uh, so expected return um, is actually the risk free return plus the 
the risk premium for the factor 1 means past type of risk and then uh, risk premium for factor 2 and risk premium for factor 3 uh, so it, it, they will uh, calculate based on different types of risk and then uh, so what are the types of risk for example the company risk factors the profitability the in debt the the indebtedness of the company, the size, if a big company uh, is a small, uh, lower risk, but small company got higher risk. So there will be a premium uh, for, for debt risk and then the industry risk factors, okay, where if the industry is a high, a high, got higher risk, so they will have a higher premium. And then the macroeconomic risk factor, whether this company is um, vulnerable to, to the inflation or unemployment or or uh, whether the, the GDP has any impact. So all these uh, risk factors, they will put one, one, uh, one plus two plus three, all these, they will add up uh, and, uh, and then uh, they will get the, uh, uh, the required, uh, expected return uh, from that, uh, the price. So these are the, the two, two models to, to know the, the, the pricing of the assets. So now, uh, as we have again come back to this uh, discussion, the, the very uh, highly debated uh, concept of efficient market hypothesis. As uh, I have uh, discussed earlier, uh, that uh, the two of the scholars, uh, they also uh, uh, supported this uh, efficient market hypothesis, while some uh, do not. So what this uh, efficient market hypothesis, uh, this is a, a theory or philosophy that uh, it said that it is essentially impossible to beat the market through either fundamental or technical analysis since the market efficiently prices all stocks on an ongoing basis. Any opportunities for excess returns are almost immediately uh, whittled uh, away by the market's many participants. So, but uh, this, based on this theory, they say that the information is now available due to technology within seconds. We know different the, the information of a company. Uh, and so because we know the information of the company and uh, because of the, the, the competition in the market, so the, the market itself uh, is fair. The, the pricing is, is, is efficient. So it will price the asset fairly uh, we don't so if we do the fundamental analysis we actually we cannot actually uh, find the uh, undervalued company because the market will actually correct um, is, is efficient and also the technical analysis you know, based, which is based on the historical data it cannot uh, actually tell us uh, what will happen in the in the in future uh, and if uh, if there is any changes or anything happens then the market will will fix it so that is the uh, what the efficient market hypothesis believe okay so the proponents of the efficient market hypothesis conclude that investors could do better by investing in a low cost and passive portfolio. So as uh, we cannot uh, beat the market or with uh, or only a group of people, they cannot just uh, get a, a lot of profits from investing in one share, uh, kind of share and no. So it is better for us to, 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 um, to invest in a passive portfolio, means to invest in a group of uh, shares in a, in, a, in a portfolio, to have a portfolio and to minimize our costs and so with that to be passive uh, so that we'll uh, minimize our costs so that will give uh, us actually a higher profit in the long run. So why uh, the efficient market hypothesis? Uh, okay, why they say so? Because if, uh, if any mm, uh, company share uh, if any company's share price um, goes up, okay, so immediately people will rush and buy that share until the uh, the share price of that company will go further up. Or if let's say if a company uh, has a good potential, it is get it is uh, having higher return. So people will know and they will immediately buy, and so on, the demand will go up. So people the the price of the share of that. Uh, company uh, will go up so uh, uh, it will reach to the point that uh, you uh, don't want to buy uh, anymore because it is uh, uh, so it actually happened like uh, in 
like um, in Malaysian companies like Top Globes and others. So when they uh, these companies uh, getting a uh, lot of profits, so people bought their shares and until their share went up. So those who bought uh, after that, uh, you know, with a very high price, so uh, then after that the uh, the prices started to uh, go down because of the the when the COVID situation uh, was uh, getting better. So th that's uh, the thing means if a company is uh, doing well, the people rush and they will buy the share, so the demand will go up, the price will. Uh, you know, will go up. So the the market will uh, is efficient because of the the competition and because of the information available to everyone. And also, there is a study that shows that uh, for uh, from 2019 to 2019, only 23 percent of active managers were able to to out outperform their passive peers. So very few. Uh, of them, they, they actually outperform. Okay, rather than those who did passive uh, investments, uh, they uh, uh, they actually did uh, well. So, however, the the market efficiency also has a three levels. Some are weak, some are semi strong, and strong. So, weak one is where only the past information of a company is available. But the semi-strong one where the past and present information of the company is available. We know the past history of the company what's and what is the, the present information. And the strong one is where we know the past, present and also all private information uh, means uh, in, from the inside the, the company. So if a comp uh, in a share market, if all these uh, uh, informations are available, Okay, we know, of course, the financial data is available and the past history and then the private information. If anything happened in the company, the, the CEO change or CFO change, so we, we, we can know immediately. So that is the, the, that market has a strong form of efficiency. So now what is the implication of this uh, uh, efficient market hypothesis is that so is, um, if Based on this efficient market hypothesis, uh, the technical analysis and fundamental analysis uh, do not really have uh, importance there because uh, the market will uh, is a fair, it is efficient. So, based on that historical data, is someone cannot really uh, uh, predict for the future. And also, uh, to do the fundamental analysis, to go for looking for undervalued shares, is it doesn't really work because the market will uh, is efficient all the uh, assets are uh, priced uh, fairly so they most uh, so it is better to go for a passive uh, portfolio management because uh, so that we can meet, minimize the cost if we active so we will increase due to the trading buying and selling there is a tax for that so um, will uh, lose a lot of money so rather go for passive and we diversify so it calls for for the diversification uh, of the investments to make a portfolio well so whether this uh, so this is a debate among the investors whether uh, 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 is it uh, really true or not well it is uh, true that efficient mark uh, the market is efficient However, it is not perfect. Means that uh, the the all uh, it is not hundred percent. Means not all the markets are hundred percent efficient. And uh, we can know that um, sometimes the the market uh, it ha it also um, uh, it crashes or also people they they behave. Uh, the investors behave based on their different type of uh, sentiments, especially. Uh, you know, different types of uh, market uh, crashes. And uh, we can also see that uh, Warren Buffett is an example that who consistently uh, beat the, uh, the market. So there are uh, some they can uh, beat the market and uh, their market is not uh, is 100% efficient. Uh, because sometimes the investors they invest based on their sentiments and then, then uh, sometimes there is a market crash so at that time uh, some companies uh, they uh, uh, 
the price may uh, may uh, they may not be priced uh, fairly so it may uh, also happen uh, but at the same time uh, we need to uh, also we cannot um, deny that uh, the ma uh, market is also somehow uh, efficient or, or it can be like uh, or we can say like uh, semi efficient that uh, the because of the information the availability of information uh, uh, the, the market uh, uh, will again correct the, the price of the uh, of the asset so uh, that's all on on this so I thank you assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh